If you told me to choose which sex I'd rather be, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. I love being a woman, but I don't love everything about it. After all, some parts of being a woman are more difficult than others, like feeling pressured to always look good, having cramps, finding a balance between being powerful and being feminine. And then, of course, there's the question of men. Every day of our lives, you and I have to deal with our husbands or boyfriends, our bosses or employers, our fathers, our sons. We try to understand them, take care of them, communicate with them, love them, and get them to love us back. Sometimes it works, and we think men are fantastic. And sometimes it doesn't, and we're sure they're driving us crazy. Well, I've spent the past 15 years working with tens of thousands of men and women learning about what makes relationships succeed and what makes them fail. It's taken me a long time to understand men. Believe me, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. Now, I want to share everything I've learned with you. And so I've created this video, Secrets About Men Every Woman Should Know. Now, many women find it's fun to invite a group of girlfriends over and watch the tape together. And you'd be surprised how much men love this video. Since it's not a men are jerks tape, your husband or boyfriend will enjoy hearing what the men and the women have to say and will understand more about you as a woman. Well, I have to confess, I'm a little jealous of you. After all, it took me years of often painful experience to learn all these secrets about men, and you get to sit back and hear them all in one hour. Have fun. wish that men would come with instruction booklets? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. You know, if you buy a toaster oven or an answering machine, they come with this nice little booklet and it helps you understand the product and not hurt yourself when you use it. Well, what about men? I mean, we certainly use men more than our other appliances, right? Yes. Well, if you're like me, I'm sure that at some point in your life you've thrown up your hands in frustration and felt like saying, Send him back to the factory. He's defective. There's a part missing. Or maybe this model's been discontinued. I can't make him work right. Yeah. Well, I like to say that men and women are really from different planets. We speak a different language. We have different values. In fact, it's a miracle that we get along at all. Well, as a woman, you have three choices. Okay, number one, you can get angry at the men in your life for driving you crazy and spend your time complaining. And that's not much fun. Number two, you can give up men entirely and buy a nice fluffy dog. <laughs> Cheaper, but it's not very fulfilling. And here's your third choice. You can decide to learn everything you can about men and how to understand them so you can have wonderful relationships. Well, tonight, I'm going to share with you some secrets about men that every woman needs to know. Now, learning these simple but powerful concepts has definitely change my life for the better, and I know that they'll change yours too. Now, I can see some of you looking and saying, oh boy, we're going to get to sit here and talk about what's wrong with men for a little while. Well, before you get too excited, I'd like you to think about this. Part of improving your relationships with men, whether it's your husband, your boss, your boyfriend, your father, or your coworkers, is not just understanding their behavior, but taking an honest look at your behavior as well. The truth is, how we act around men is 50% of the problem. We do things as women that men really can't stand. And this makes men treat us even worse. So let's eavesdrop on a session I had a few days ago in which I asked a group of men, what are some of the things men can't stand about women? Here's what they said. They, they make it real hard for you to love them sexually or, or emotionally when they're acting like a little girl because yeah. they're treating you like their father. Or if they never take initiative. Yeah. You know, yeah. Also, yeah. you've got to be Mr. Aggressive all the time. Constant <clears throat> flip-flop, you know, if they're, if they're not uh, being the little girl and being insecure and completely wimpy about everything, they have to, someday, they, they sit down and go, God, I'm being so wimpy, and they flip over the next day and they become this domineering mother routine. Uh, woman, right? it's, the const, it's the constant yeah. thing. They sit there, oh, geez, I'm being too wimpy. Now I've got to be real strong. And you're sitting there, and one day they're asking you to be, you know, absolutely emotionally open and, and be this kind of loose way, and you do that, and then you're a wimp. And then if you're not the other way and become this kind of macho individual who, doesn't, who sits there and doesn't pick them up, then, uh, 
I mean, you're nothing. What that brings up for me is just how controlling that the women are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they use yeah. it to um, control and manipulate the men, uh, yeah. to lift things for them or hold things for them. And uh, they use it especially in regards to their sexual energy and how they manipulate men by either uh, putting the sexual energy out to men mm -hmm. and then pulling it back or just holding the sexual energy back from men entirely. How about they check off their clothes and they go, look at this. Oh, isn't this disgusting to you? Yeah, it's yeah, really it's disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. Fred, like, can I have another drink, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you agree, you get bashed over the head, and if you don't agree, you're still right. going to get in an argument. No, then, I don't mind doing backflips all day and, and, and bringing home the lion's share of, of the money, and I like to be appreciated more for it, and it's like that appreciation level just goes down and then you're expected to make all the plans and be Mr. Wonderful and bring home the bacon and like you're a clown on stage and you're entertaining all the time. Yeah, and that's after you've gone out with a woman who you probably in the first place thought was going to be independent and strong and the kinds of things you really like to have. One day you wake up and it's Velcro woman. You know, <laughs> it's the cling and you just can't get the thing away and you want to go out at night and just, well, where were you last night? Where are you at 11 o'clock? You're out with the boys. Oh, sure you're out with the boys. I mean, it's, it's and it gets to a whole thing where you just, can't wait to be away from this woman you know just get me out of here yeah. you have to be their security mm -hmm. you know it's 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 you look good you know do i look good yes you look good and like you have to convince them that they look good it's, <laughs> it, it never works how about being the target of all their past anger and um, suppressed feelings towards old boyfriends or fathers and then you do something and it reminds them of that and they just blast it out on you. Yeah. Right, and here's, here's and the problem is, is women, right. women like through the years have been taught that it's not okay to be angry and then as soon as they feel they're in a relationship with somebody that's safe to be all of them, they dump all the anger and then you don't get to hear the rest of it, you know, you're just the safety zone, the sounding board. I feel like a meal ticket, I, you know, it's just you meet them and within five minutes you can tell all they're looking for is someone that's going to you know, pay their rent for them. Father, yeah, Miller just Rowe. totally, you know, pretty much run their life. I mean, like, they want, they want a free ride, but then they sit around and moan and groan about the scenery along the way. Okay, now it's time for us to take a look at ourselves as women. Because whether you're aware of it or not, you may be bringing out the worst in the men in your life by how you behave around them. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the ten biggest mistakes women make with men. Of course, we don't make these mistakes on purpose, do we? We don't. We learn to act this way by how our mothers acted and their mothers before them. But these old habits are getting us in a lot of trouble. So pay attention, take notes. What you're about to hear may save your love life. Mistake number one, women act like mothers and treat men like children. Anyone in here guilty? I hear the groans already. We assume that men can't, can't take care of themselves. We assume that they don't know how to do things right. And we're constantly contributing advice, direction. How do we do this? For instance, honey, did you remember your wallet? <laughs> honey, I'll call the restaurant and make the reservations as if he can't and he'll ruin it. Now, the problem is that we assume men are incompetent. That may be correct. <laughs> However, men are never going to learn to do the things that we think they should do if we're always doing it for them. So when we give in the mothering all the time, we don't give men an opportunity to grow up and be mature the way that we want them to be mature. Why do we do this? Well, number one, we were trained to do this. You any of you watch your mothers do this? Be mothering, be giving all the time? We watched our mothers do this, and that's number one. But number two, there's another reason. We do this to become indispensable, right? Yes. We do this to become indispensable. We take care of all of a man's needs, and there's a secret feeling. If he needs me this much, he'll never leave. If he needs me to be able to do his dry cleaning and tell him where things are, maybe he'll never leave. The problem is, the effects of this and their four negative effects are really devastating to a relationship. Number one, a man ends up resenting it, doesn't he? A man resents it when a woman is trying to be mommy to him because men were trained when they were little boys to rebel against their mothers. So eventually, even though a man might love it, he might not complain about it when you do it, he might say that he loves it and not stop, he's going to end up rebelling because all men end up breaking away from mommy. Number two, no man sleeps with his mother. So this is the quickest way to kill the passion in a relationship, to be mothering, 
all the time. Even though you think it's being loving, the relationship will turn into brother-sister and move away from a passionate relationship. It makes a man look incompetent. If you're always treating a man as incompetent, he starts to feel incompetent, and he starts to look to you like he's incompetent. Because you're always filling in the blanks. That's what I call it, filling in the blanks. The next thing it does is it defeminizes us. What I mean by that is when a man gives to you, it makes you feel feminine in that it makes you feel receptive. After all, our feminine bodies are receptive. A man's body is aggressive. So if you're in a relationship and you're always giving and you're not receiving, you cut yourself off from that feminine power, that receptive power, and you end up feeling not in touch with your own source of feminine beauty and passion and aliveness in your life. What's the solution? To stop doing it. Just to stop. It's like an addiction. To sit down and make a list of all the ways you play mommy and to just stop. And to inform the man that you are stopping. See, don't just stop. And he says, where are my keys? And say, you find them. <laughs> you know? Say, you know what? I don't want to be your mommy. I want to be your lover. And stop. He may resent it at first. Things may be a little crazy. But eventually, he'll learn. He'll do what he needs to do for himself. You'll feel like a woman, and he'll feel like a man. Number two, mistake number two. Women make men wrong. And men know it, and they resent it. Now, here's a perfect example. How many of you have ever had this experience? You're driving in a car with a man that you love. You already know what I'm about to say. Okay? You know he's lost. You know that you should have been there ages ago. You know that now you're going to miss the great event or whatever it is. Now, isn't it logical? You think to yourself, say to him, honey, right, honey, why don't we stop and what? Ask for directions. He responds as if you just said, honey, why don't you cut off your arms and legs? <laughs> and when he doesn't, we start feeling, you always get lost, you never do it right. Here's the thing we need to understand about men, and it's a mistake that we make because we don't understand. Men are brought up from the time they're little boys to be taught that their self-esteem is equated with being right, with progress, with accomplishment. Little girls are taught that their self-esteem is in how well they relate. You were a good girl. You made someone happy. But little boys are an accomplishment. So when you say to a man, you're lost, or you didn't pay that bill, he doesn't hear you're lost. He hears you're a failure, you're bad, you're no good, you're not a man. What's the solution? To talk about this. And I mean literally sit down with the man that you love and say, you know what? I just heard a tape or I just read a book. I didn't realize you were brought up and taught that you had to do things right. I didn't realize that for you to admit that you made a mistake, you really feel like you're saying you're wrong. Talk about it. Give him a chance to talk about his feelings and let him know that you don't want to make him wrong. You just want to be able to feel free to give him feedback about how what he does makes you feel. And that's the second thing. Instead of saying things to a man condemning him, like, you're a bad driver, you can say, honey, you know, when we drive around like this, <laughs> I want to kill you. No, when we, <laughs> when we drive around like this, I start to feel nervous that we're not going to be able to spend the time. And I was looking so forward to going to this party. Tell him your feelings. Don't make value judgments on him. That'll work a lot better for a man. Don't call him no good. Unless, of course, he is. And there are some <laughs> men that we're not talking about trying to tiptoe around. Some men, you should just give them the feedback because that relationship's not working. Most of the time, we should be a little bit gentler than we are with men. Okay. Mistake number three. Women put themselves second. Behind a man, behind his interest, I hear a lot of guilty sighs here. How many of you have done this? Raise your hands if you've done this. Okay. We give up our interests. We give up our opinions. We give up our friends. We give up our hobbies. We give up even trusting ourselves that we know what we feel. And we put that power, we give that power to the man in our life. Now here's the important point. Men don't ask us to do this. They don't ask us to do this. We become emotional chameleons. We walk into the relationship like a blank slate. Whatever you feel, whatever you're into, I'll be that person. I will be the woman of your dreams. It doesn't matter if I'm not really that woman, but to make the relationship work, I will mold myself. I'll change myself. And 
When we walk into a relationship empty and expect a man to fill us, we end up resenting it. He ends up resenting it and feeling like we're not a whole person. And the truth is, the more I admire you, he won't admire you for how much you can change to become the person that he wants you to be. When you become less of a person to a man, you are less interesting. And a lot of us have it mixed up. We think when we become more like the man wants us to be, we're more interesting. But that's not true. Mistake number four, women fall in love with a man's potential. Yes? We make men into projects. Into, into a career, in fact. Now, I was an expert at this. Before I was 30 years old, I did very little in my career. It may be hard to believe. However, I'd had a series of relationships. Each of those men did wonderfully in their career. They made a lot of money. And I said, isn't that terrific? Look how much I helped them. Aren't I a wonderful person? But I hid behind the men and helping them, avoiding my own potential, avoiding my own dreams. And we do this, don't we? And we do it too much of the time. We neglect our talents. We neglect our abilities. We avoid our own destiny by hiding in a relationship or behind a relationship. We hold out for that piece of a man that's wonderful. That's the other way we do this. Well, you know, I know he's a jerk and he drinks and he hasn't said, I love you in three years. But, but inside of him somewhere, there's just, this, isn't it? there's just this sweet part of him. And once in a while, it comes out. And, and I know it's there. And if only I was better. You sound so guilty over here. If only I was better, I just know with a little more time, it would come out. We act like professional social workers. <laughs> and unless we're getting paid for it, we really shouldn't do it in a relationship. Now, will men support you in breaking this habit? No. They love it. They love the attention. They love being rescued. They will respect you for it, though, when you change. I know because I've done it. I'm a recovering rescue-holic in my <laughs> life. What's the solution? Number one, to love yourself enough so that you do not walk into a relationship, an empty vessel, and have to find meaning by helping a man. Take all that energy you're putting onto helping and rescuing men and their potential and focus it on your own potential, your own dreams. So you come into the relationship a whole 100% person. Ask yourself, if you have a history of doing this, literally sit down and say, what am I hiding from? What are the things I've been avoiding doing in my life by always helping men do what they need to do? And the other thing is, of course, find a man who is willing to fix himself up rather than somebody who can't wait till you come along to try to fix him up, rather than him taking responsibility for it. Now, how many of you have done this? Let's just take an informal survey here. And we all just are so ashamed of this, aren't we? But let, let's talk about this. Let's hear from some of you. Yes, here we are. I spent 15 years trying to get him to see the same potential that I saw, and realized all I was doing is making him more angry, because I could see it, and he didn't want to see it. Mm -hmm. And it caused nothing but havoc. And uh, and it was also a great way to avoid me taking care of myself. That's right. Well said. Uh, who else here? I thought that I could only be great if I could help a man mm -hmm. to be great or overcome some horrible thing in his life. It's a way we avoid our own greatness, isn't it? Absolutely. Mistake number five, women cover up their excellence and their competence when they're around men. Now, how many of you know right away that you've done this? You cover up, you don't look as good as you really are. How do we do this? Somebody gives you a compliment, a man says, that's terrific what you did at work, and you say, really? Do you think so? <laughs> oh, it wasn't that much. It was really nothing. We put ourselves down. We make ourselves look less intelligent than we are. And some of the ways we do this also, we act confused when we know the answers. We act hurt when we're really angry at somebody. We hide the parts of us that we are proud of for several reasons. Number one, a lot of us grew up being taught what? Don't win if you play volleyball with a guy. Let him win. Make the man look better, right? Make the man look smarter. Make him feel better about himself. You may not realize it, but a lot of us are still doing this. We do it at work, especially. We do it in our relationships. We don't want to look smarter, more successful, or more together than the man we love. But in the process, we rip off the men we love from seeing what a magnificent woman we are and inspiring him maybe to get a little more work on himself because we play second. Another thing we do is we hold back our accomplishments because we're afraid of looking conceited, 
arrogant, snobby. These are all words that are from high school, aren't they? But women still have that fear that if I'm excellent, I'm going to be a target, and I'm not going to be loved or respected, not just by men, but by other women. Now, here's a secret you need to know. Competence turns men on. Men love competence in women. They're attracted to it. And we think that putting ourselves down is making us real humble and submissive. It's actually a turnoff. It kills the passion eventually in the relationship. Look for a man who wants to let you shine, who wants to celebrate your accomplishment. Catch yourself putting yourself down. The next time you start to minimize your accomplishments, the next time you start to not talk about what's really terrific about yourself, stop and just restate it and celebrate yourself. Because if you do, you will find men celebrating you a lot more also. Let's, let's talk about how some of you do this, because I know some of you are experts at making yourself in the background, not really owning that. Yes, you already have the mic. I know what I used to do. I was so concerned that if I was competent, women would be jealous of me, and I was sure men would disappear. So I, I stood in the background and pushed the other people ahead, mm -hmm. and then gave myself credit for being such a wonderful person. Such a martyr. Yeah, but never such satisfied. A <laughs> exactly. Yes, what Yes, I have um, played music all my life since I was a child, and then I married a musician, and I didn't make my own music at all anymore until after we were divorced, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he was the musician. I can tell you that I actually have met women who've said that they knew five foreign languages or that they had tremendous talents that their husband or boyfriend didn't even know about because they were so used to keeping them hidden and keeping them in the background and not celebrating them. And of course, when you don't show it to somebody else, you start forgetting about it yourself and you forget what a terrific person you really are. Okay, mistake number six, women give up their power all the time and we don't realize we do it. We allow ourselves to be treated in ways that, for instance, if you had a daughter, you would never want her to be treated that way. But we allow ourselves to go through it. We sacrifice our own integrity. We let men do things to us or talk to us in ways that we feel terrible about. And we don't stick up for ourselves. And we don't say anything about it. I call this not maintaining our dignity. And the truth is that we get mad at men and we say, why doesn't he treat me with respect? If you don't treat yourself with respect, don't expect a man to. That's the bottom line. Boy, I do. I've really given my power up for 38 years. I have been married to a man who I turn on the television for. I clean up after him. I do everything, and I know it. I know I'm a victim, and I'm having a heck of a time getting out of this relationship because I know I'm wrong, and I say to myself, I look in the mirror, and I say, Boy, are you stupid? Why don't you do it already? And each time I try to go, he, he starts to cry, and he says, you're killing me, I'm going to die if you leave. I can't, you know, and then I say, well, as soon as I have prosperity, I'm going to do it, you know, and I will. I will. Barbara's pushing me. I mean, she doesn't <laughs> let me stop thinking about it. Thank so. you. <laughs> Who else? Giving up your power. I wasn't raised with animals, so I'm not used to having a dog in the house. I hate it. I'm getting mad now just thinking that this dog is in my house. And, and my husband uses our silverware to scoop up dog food. <laughs> Even though he says that he rinses it, but it's still not good enough for me. And I hate that. I hate the dog in the house. I hate it. <laughs> I believe her. I believe her. Okay. Okay, we're going on here to number seven, one of my all-time favorites. I really needed this one. And this is women get too serious. We get so, and we're all saying, no, we can't even laugh at that because that's how serious we are. <laughs> we don't know how to play and have fun. We don't always know how to lighten up. We take everything so to heart. And men complain sometimes they can't just be friends with us. We always have to have a serious conversation, a heavy talk. And then they go out and they want to go out with their guy friends or they want to go down to the bar or they want to go meet some woman they used to be friends with. And we get upset not realizing that. Now, I used to be the worst. You know how men get cranky like dogs? They kind of start barking at you. Well, I realized that he was barking at me, and I never knew what to do. I would cry, or I would talk to him. It didn't work. So one day, I decided I'd try something new, because men do respond to humor. That's the thing we have to realize. So he was barking at me. He was saying mean things, and I just looked at him, and I went, 
and I just started growling back like a dog. Well, he was completely shocked. And then he started laughing at himself because he realized that he was sounding like an angry dog. But it was my way of learning to express myself without having to say, now we're about to have a heavy conversation, which makes men want to get up and run in the other direction as far as possible. Okay? Number eight, and this one, you're going to hate to hear this, ladies. This really hits home, but it's so important for us. Mistake number eight, women act like little girls to get what they want. Yes, we do. That's what we do. <laughs> Does anyone know what I'm talking about? We play cutesy pie. You know, we play Little Miss Muffet. Oh, honey, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Really? <laughs> this is so subtle. We do this because we were brought up doing this. When we were little girls, we got a lot of points doing this. Only some of us are still playing little girl and treating men like daddy, thinking that acting cute thinking that acting this way is going to get us what we want. And you know what? It will. Because it makes men feel big and strong and in charge, and they will like it. However, they won't respect you, and they won't treat you like a woman. What will they treat you like? A little girl. And what happens to the passion in a relationship where you play little girl a lot of the time? It goes down the drain, and you wonder what happens. One of the biggest ways we do this is that we act confused when we're not. I'm so confused. I don't really know what's going on. How many times have I counseled women who've said things like, I'm so confused about my relationship. And when I ask them what's happening, they say, well, my husband's cheating on me. We haven't had sex in two years, but I'm so confused about my relationship. And there's nothing confusing. We use confusion as a cover-up for grown-up feelings like anger and hurt and guilt and resentment. Confusion is a little girl feeling. So are tears when you're really angry. Anyone here cry when you're really angry? That's a little girl thing to do. Next time you find yourself crying, ask yourself, is there something I'm angry about that I really need to look at instead of lying here and crying? Acting like a little girl gives men a double message. It says, I want to be treated like a woman, but I'm really a little girl. And you know what men end up feeling like? Responsible. Now, we talked earlier about men feeling responsible. Men don't want any more responsibility than they already feel they have. So if they feel like they have to rescue you, at first they'll love it because it makes them feel strong. Eventually, they'll resent it, and they'll resent you for being the martyr that they have to come in and fix everything. I'll see if mistake number nine sounds familiar to you. Women either tiptoe around men or rebel against them. In other words, we seesaw. For instance, you're in a relationship, you're trying to act nice, you push down your negative feelings, you don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to say anything. And you keep pushing them down and pushing them down until they build up. And then when you finally talk about it, it comes out like this huge volcano. And he says, I didn't even know you were upset. All of a sudden, you're attacking me. In other words, we go from wimp to bitch. Wimp to bitch. Some of us do this in whole relationships. We spend one relationship giving up our power, like we've heard before, not asking for what we wanted, not having our interests. So we say, that's it. In my next relationship, I'm in control. And we get in the next relationship, and from the minute the guy even looks at us, we say, don't give me any trouble. <laughs> right? I want you to know I'm into owning my power. And he thinks, my gosh, what happened? I didn't even say anything. I said, hello. I said, I like you. We seesaw back and forth because we don't find a middle balance somewhere where we are truly in touch with our power. We get angry at ourselves for being a victim. We get angry at ourselves for giving up our power. And then we overreact by being too assertive, too aggressive. Men don't understand it. Then they call us aggressive and bitchy. We think, well, make up your mind. You said you wanted me to say it. Now I said it. Do you want me to go back and be the other way? It's not them. It's us. The extremes don't work. Somewhere in the middle is the place where your own integrity is. That's the place that you need to listen to. That's the voice that needs to speak, not just once in a while, but all the time in a relationship. Now, number 10, and this is the last mistake, and it's one of the biggest, and it's one of the most embarrassing. Women use their sexuality to manipulate men. Yes, this is true. We can actually admit it. We're among friends here. We may not be aware that we do this. You may not be aware of how much we do this, but we don't treat men just like people. We treat men like men. That may sound strange, but let me tell you a compliment I got once, and it was from 
Somebody in my profession who I was working on a project with, and he said to me, I want you to know what I like about you the most. When you're around me, you don't act like a woman. You act like a person. And it allows me to respect you and treat you differently. And what he meant by that was not that I was acting unfeminine, but that I was not changing my behavior because there was a man in the room. I wasn't changing my body language. I wasn't doing any little extra touches that I wouldn't do to a woman. I wasn't standing too close of a distance. I wasn't throwing in little sexual innuendos. These are all unconscious things that we do. We've been trained to do them. We see them in movies and television. But what they do is they limit us and they make us seen as a sex object. If you don't want to be treated like a sex object, don't act like one and don't treat men like sex objects. Treat them the same way you treat a woman or any person. And not because they're a man, change your behavior or change your energy. How do we do this? A little leak, a little sexual leak I call it, a little zap a little look, just something extra that we figure is going to get us a little farther. Will it? Absolutely. There's no question about it. The man will respond to it. But he also then puts you in a certain category. His respect level goes down, and he will manipulate you back in return. Now, just because you've heard a list of the ten biggest mistakes that women make with men doesn't mean that you're not going to make them anymore. It's hard to break old habits, no matter how much you want to. Well, in the next few days and weeks, you'll catch yourself doing many of the same things that we just talked about. But that's great. The first step in changing yourself is always to become aware of what you're doing that's hurting you. So, memorize this list, share it with your friends, and you can support each other in having the relationships you deserve. Okay, ladies, we've come to the part you've all been waiting for. It's time for us to solve the five biggest mysteries about men. Five questions that at one time or another have plagued every woman who's ever had to deal with a man. So here they are. Mystery number one, why men get so angry and defensive? Now, have you ever been talking to a man you love? You know he's upset. You know something's bothering him. You're trying to pull him out. He keeps denying it. Nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. Stop bugging me. Don't pressure me until he blows up at you and actually blames you for bringing it up in the first place when all along he was deeply upset inside. Why is it that men seem the only emotion they can show sometimes is anger? If they're hurt, they get angry. If they feel guilty, they get angry. If they love you, and miss you, they get angry. Here's, here's the secret. When men are little boys, and they all wear ones, when men are little boys, they are taught that emotions that are vulnerable, like hurt, like fear, like guilt, are weak emotions. That little boys are supposed to be strong and brave and tough. So what men have done throughout their entire lives is edit their feelings, not just to women, but to themselves, to the point where if a man is feeling an unacceptable emotion, he doesn't let himself even be conscious of it. And the emotions build up, the tension builds up, and the only channel those feelings can come out in is anger. It's almost like there's this big puddle of emotions, and there's one little tube, and it's the anger tube. And no matter what strong feeling a man has, that's the emotion that he feels safe expressing. Even though we misinterpret that emotion as anger, a lot of times he's feeling love, he's feeling vulnerable, he's even feeling needy. Emotionally, I'm not as articulate sometimes about my feelings. So when, when I get angry, sometimes I've realized it's really because I'm fearing something, I'm afraid of something. And, it's, it's, and if I do get angry sometimes, I just need some time to kind of settle down and mull it over and figure it out and then I'll always come clean about what I'm really feeling and what's going on but sometimes when I'm expected to to really produce a reason very quickly I can't do it it's always been easier for me to express anger I was raised in a family that expressed anger I was raised in a neighborhood that expressed anger and this uh, way of expressing yourself through being vulnerable and sensitive is something new to me and I haven't quite got that under control yet, so I still go back into using the anger to express myself. Here's the solution. Number one, don't assume if a man sounds angry that he is angry. Don't assume it right away. Ask yourself, if I were him right now, what would I be feeling? Maybe he's feeling hurt. 
Is there something I did that maybe hurt his feelings? Is he scared about something at work? So explore the feeling yourself. Then suggest to him, rather than saying, oh, you're always getting angry, say, honey, did I do something yesterday that really hurt your feelings? Or are you worried about that project at work? Suggest the emotions that he may not be in touch with himself. That'll give him an out, since you said it first, to talk about it. Number two. Give man lots of positive feedback for every vulnerable feeling. If he even opens up a little bit and says, well, I'm a little worried, or, well, I felt a little upset, thank him for it. Tell him how much it meant to you. I'm not talking about buttering him up. I'm talking about giving him new support and acknowledgement for something that's usually very scary for a man, and that's to talk about what scares him. Number three. Listen without putting words in his mouth. One of the things that we do as women, when a man's trying to get his feelings out, is we start judging, we start trying to tell him what's going on, we give him psychoanalysis, instead of being patient and allowing him just to take his time talking about whatever it is. Men have their own way of talking about it. So allow him the space to let the feelings out and explore those vulnerable feelings that are very new to him. It may be easy for you to talk about vulnerable feelings. It's very hard for men. All right, mystery number two, why men can't express themselves. Here's the story. You get all dressed up for a date with somebody you love. You do your hair, your makeup, you have maybe a new dress or something. You go down, you meet this person, and you show up and you say, here I am, honey, how do I look? And he looks at you and he says, you look great. And he walks in the other room. You feel slighted. You feel like he didn't notice you. When you say to him, why weren't you telling me how I look? He says, I'm never saying enough. Nothing I ever say satisfies you. What's the problem? What's the problem? Men don't notice details. That's what the problem is. And this is something we need to know about men. And it's something that is genetic. Men, <laughs> it really is. I want you to think about men and their whole genetic background for thousands and thousands of years. Men were out on the plains, they were hunting. They were looking for tribes that were about to come over and take away their cave. Men have a very expanded awareness. Proof of this, have you ever been on the phone and you're doing your nails, you're on the phone, you're writing checks at the same time and you have no problem doing three or four things at the same time? Have you ever tried to talk to a man when he's on the phone? Just give him a few things to say, stop it, I can't concentrate, <laughs> right? This is because men literally only can focus on one thing at a time. They have a much broader awareness. They can think about how I'm going to make the house payments next year, where things are going to go. Women are more trained to notice detail. So men don't not want to tell you how they feel. They don't notice it. They don't put their attention on it. And it's not that they're trying to not be nice to you. They really are in the habit of not paying attention to all the details. Now, your girlfriends will notice them. Your girlfriends will tell you how fantastic you look, and you'll think, why can't he be like her? Why can't he just say, oh, I love this color on you and this shape. Are these earrings new? You look so wonderful. <laughs> Men won't do this because they're not used to it, but it doesn't mean they don't love you. It means that they don't know how. One of the things that comes natural to me is the ability to see the big picture, but I have a tendency to overlook details. And a lot of times, women want you to notice details like colors and patterns and things like that, and I'm just not there for them. I have a real hard time expressing my feelings and what I really feel inside. And I know it frustrates the woman in my life terribly because she wants to hear this stuff, and I'm having difficulty telling her what she wants to hear. What's the solution? Well, number one, you can train him to notice the details. And that means to begin to point details out to him about himself, about things he does that mean something to you. And if he says to you, you look great, say to him, why? <laughs> but not that way. Say, well, what do you like about this dress? And he'll look at it and he'll say, well, you know, I like the color. I say, oh, that's nice. Do you like this color better than some of those other colors? And they will end up learning to talk about it and paying attention to it. But it's not something they think of on their own. Men are never going to be as sensitive as women are to the little things in life. And they're never going to be as sensitive to talking about feelings that they can't put their finger on. You need to really go in there and help them learn. And it's like a new language, the language of emotion. But they will learn it. And when they learn it, they're absolutely wonderful at it. OK? Mystery number three. 
I know women who would pay to have this piece of information. Why men need to rebel? Why is it that their whole lives men seem to be rebelling against women as if women are the enemy? Have you ever given a suggestion to a man that you know is the right suggestion, he knows it's the right suggestion, and he still has to do it his way, and eventually he comes around and does it your way, but not right away? I've been a rebel from the, from the word go, so the, the second that a woman in my life says to me that she wants me to do something, even if I know that it's exactly what I need to be doing, I'll do the complete opposite just so that I don't succumb to that, just so I can rebel and just have something to like um, get into an argument with. What's the solution? Give men a little more space at the appropriate times, and they will come back. Here's an example, and I do this in my own relationship. Let's say that you're discussing something with your partner, you have an opinion, he disagrees with it, you know you're right. He knows you're right, but you know he's not going to give in. Don't keep badgering him and stand on top of him and have a huge argument. Say, okay, honey, why don't you just think about it, okay? And we'll talk about it later and leave the room. Just drop it. I guarantee you that gives the man the space to come to that idea on his own and to come back and say, you know what? I was thinking about what you said, and I think it is a good idea. But if he feels like you're on his case the whole time, he's going to resist He's going to rebel. Mystery number four, why men hate it when women get upset or emotional. Why men seem to just feel like it's a disease if you're showing your feelings. Now, this understanding this is going to save your sanity. Have you ever come home from a hard day at work or something's going on in your family or inside of you and you want to sit down with a man you love and just tell him how you're feeling and open up? All you want is a little comfort. All you want is for him to maybe hold you and tell you it's going to be okay. And as you open up, the more emotional you get, the more upset and cold and critical he gets until somehow you end up being blamed for being upset in the first place. And you can't understand how this happens. He ends up getting angry at you because you were upset to begin with. Why does this happen? This is one of the great mysteries about men. And here's the solution. Men are brought up to think they're supposed to fix things. Men are brought up to think they are the responsible one. After all, when a man's even two, three years old, he's told one day, you're going to be in charge. You're going to be the head of a household. Most of us, at least at our age, were not told that when we were two or three years old. So a man has this weight of the world on his shoulders from the time he's small. When a man hears you telling him your problems, you know what he hears? He doesn't hear, comfort me. He hears, fix it, rescue me, figure it out for me. And he feels so pressured. That's why men will give you advice rather than a hug. That's why they'll start saying, well, honey, there's no reason to be upset. Just do this and go in here. And you're getting angrier and angrier. I don't want him to tell me what to do. I just want him to hold me. I just want him to tell me it's going to be OK. Men don't know that. They think that they are obligated to make things better for you. When I get in a relationship, I immediately feel responsible for her happiness and my happiness. And I take it all onto myself to fix her problems. And I just don't understand sometimes that all she needs to be is just comforted. I feel a real deep sense of obligation to find a solution to any problem that the woman in my life has. And I don't know where it comes from, but I just feel a real deep sense of obligation to do that. And if I don't, I feel real guilty about it. Uh, when a woman falls apart, I always automatically come to the rescue. I have to be Mr. Fix-It. And the bottom line for the problem is usually just me listening to her telling her problems. They misinterpret emotion for women falling apart. And this is the other thing, that men, when they're feeling vulnerable feelings, know that it's pretty extreme. When a woman cries or a woman says she's afraid, the man doesn't think she's just temporarily afraid. He thinks, oh my gosh, she's falling apart. She's going to start and she's not going to stop. This is something that they think because of how they would be in that position. So here's a few solutions for you. Number one, when you're upset, tell a man exactly what you want from him. Tell him if you want to be hugged. Tell him if you want him to just listen. This sounds like something so simple, but you'd be surprised how well it works. Because the man suddenly feels, you mean I don't have to fix it? I don't have to go into work and do it for you? I can just hold you? They wouldn't think about that, but that's many times exactly what we want. You can also give men a time limit and say to him, look, I have some things I'm upset about. I just need five minutes to just completely fall apart, and then I'll be fine. 
Men think if you start, it's going to go on and on and on. And the problem is when you don't get that comfort, it does go on and on because you keep trying to get that reaction. So say to him, honey, I need 10 minutes to just fall apart, be a little girl, and then I'll get up and do what I have to do. Men like the boundaries. They like to know what's going on. And finally, make sure to watch your tendency to exaggerate because men take things literally. If you say, I don't know what I'm going to do, they think you mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. If you say, I don't think I can handle it anymore, they think you can't handle it. Men are much more literal than women. So watch that tendency. Be more accurate. Say, you know, part of me feels this way, but I know everything's going to be okay. I just need to let this go. Men don't realize how quickly women snap back from disaster or from emotion. Men take a lot longer when they're upset to recover. We can recover like that. Men don't understand that. So explain it, and you'll find you'll get a lot more comfort and a lot less advice from the men in your life. Now, mystery number five, why men seem to care less about love and the relationship than women do. Now, here's the analogy that I know you're going to relate to. You're in a boat, a rowboat, and you're in the front, and your partner's in the back, and you figure you're in this boat together, and the boat's a relationship, and you're both rowing, and you're making progress, and everything's great. Well, you decide maybe you're tired one day, so you stop rowing, and you notice the boat stops all of a sudden. You turn around, and you realize that your partner's not rowing. He's been a passenger. And I call it being a passenger in the relationship. Maybe he's not even in the boat. And you were rowing thinking you're having a wonderful relationship. It's all in your head. A lot of us do that. Here's the key to understanding this. Men equate their self-esteem with accomplishment. And they've been, again, taught this from the time that they're young. Women equate their self-esteem with creating happiness in themselves and others. This is why women feel responsible for making everybody happy. Men feel responsible for doing things. So when a man doesn't feel good about what's going on in his life, when he doesn't feel good about his financial situation or his career goals, that's number one for him. It's not that he doesn't care about love. It's not that he doesn't care about you. It's that he can't relax until those other things are taken care of. Women just don't understand me. I mean, my work is my life, and what I do is very important, and I feel that I'm bringing that into the relationship. I'm there to take care of myself and to take care of her. And they always feel like um, I don't care, like they don't matter to me, and they do. I was just in a relationship with a woman who always considered herself number two. It was like my career and her. It was like this, oh, it was always this like constant battle. And she never really understood that as much as I cared about her, if I didn't feel good about my career, I wasn't feeling good about myself. And I really didn't need to devote a lot of energy to my career and to make myself feel settled financially, financially stable, so that I could give to her the 100% that she really wanted. Women sometimes are the opposite. No matter how much money we're making or how successful, if we're not happy in a relationship, sometimes that's the place that gets us. This is why men have more heart attacks than women. This is why men have more disease that's stress-related and don't live as long, because they equate their feeling of well-being with what they're doing all the time. They don't see a relationship as doing something. They see it as a commodity. They see it as, I'm in a relationship, like I have a stereo. But this is my real work out here. The solution is, again, talking to men about this. We do have different priorities, but you need to come to a compromise. And what that means is making sure that you get a commitment from the man in your life about, number one, the kind of time he's willing to spend working on the relationship, the methods he's willing to use to work on the relationship, and his picture of what the relationship is going to look like so that you're not the one rowing the boat the whole time and you have some specific things that the man is willing to commit to. And the second thing is to really let a man begin to understand that creating a good relationship is an activity, is a tremendous accomplishment, that it's not just women's work, that it's not just about happiness and feeling, but it's about creating a sanctuary for both of you from the world, from all the stresses in the world. And it's important to have those ground rules with a man so that you understand from the beginning that you're working as a team, not you pulling the load and him behind, but the two of you together are committed to making that relationship work. Well, I hope you all feel a little wiser solving these five mysteries about men. Of course, there are a lot more mysteries, so don't forget, the best way to understand men is to ask them to explain themselves to you. 
It might be hard at... <laughs> it, it might be hard at first, but if you really listen, without judging them, men will feel safe, open up, and reveal their innermost selves to you. After all, how do you think I got all this information? <laughs> Are you ready to find out how good you are at relating to men? Here's a quiz designed to reveal the strengths and weaknesses in your relationships with the men in your life. You'll need a piece of paper and a pen to take this quiz. The quiz has 10 questions. Select one of the responses shown for each question. For instance, question one is, when I'm around a man I really like or I'm attracted to, I lose part of myself by censoring my communications seeking approval, sacrificing my needs, or becoming much more self-conscious. Ask yourself, do I do this A, almost always, B, frequently, C, occasionally, D, rarely, or E, almost never? Then, mark your letter answer down on a piece of paper. So, if I lose myself around men occasionally, I'd mark down the letter C. Answer each question as honestly as you can, choosing the response that applies to you most of the time. That means don't answer as you know you should behave, but how you usually behave. At the end of the quiz, I'll help you total up your points, and I'll explain what your score means. Okay, here goes. Question number one. When I'm around a man I really like or am attracted to, I lose part of myself by censoring my communications, seeking approval, sacrificing my needs, or becoming much more self-conscious. Question number two. I find myself feeling responsible for making sure the men in my life are taken care of and that they get done what they need to do. Question number three. I allow the men in my life to get away with treating me in ways I'd never tolerate being treated by a woman. Question number four. I use acting sexual, flirting, body language, or teasing to get my way with men. Question number five. I allow my fear of a man's negative reaction to prevent me from doing what I want or saying what I really feel in my relationships. Question number six. I feel resentful towards men for things they've done to me in the past or how they treat me presently. Question number seven. I act helpless, overwhelmed, or confused around men to get love or attention or to avoid dealing with their anger towards me. Question number eight. I feel I receive all the respect and appreciation I deserve from the men in my life. Question number nine. I ask for what I want and need 100% from the men in my life personally and professionally. Question number 10. When I'm around powerful men, boss, dad, authority figures, I feel relaxed and confident in myself. I don't alter my behavior so that I appear either unusually pushy or unusually timid. Now it's time to add up your points. For questions one through seven, give yourself the following points. For each A, two points. For each B, four points. For each C, six points. For each D, eight points. For each E, 10 points. Now that was for questions one through seven. For questions 8 through 10, give yourself the following points. For each A, 10 points. For each B, 8 points. For each C, 6 points. For each D, 4 points. 
and for each E, two points. Now, add up your total score, 80 to 100 points. Congratulations. Your hard work on yourself and your relationships have paid off, and you've learned how to be a powerful yet loving woman with the men in your life. You maintain a strong sense of yourself even when you're around men who are important to you, and you know that good communication is essential for creating healthy and lasting relationships. To avoid future problems, work on those areas in which you had a lower score. 60 to 80 points. Your relationships with men aren't bad, but they could be a lot better. Most women fall into this category. There are some warning signs you need to pay attention to so that in time, bigger problems don't erupt. Work on expressing yourself and your needs more completely and avoiding those 10 mistakes women make with men. You deserve much more love than you've been asking for. 40 to 60 points. Warning, your relationships with men are in serious trouble. You have some bad emotional habits that are keeping you from receiving the love and appreciation you deserve. You'll never get the respect you want if you continue to give up your power around men, behave like a doormat, and pretend everything's fine. It's time to make a change. The first step is to be honest with yourself about how dissatisfied you really are. Practice everything you learned in this tape, ask your friends for support, and make a commitment to start living as the powerful woman you're meant to be. 40 points and below. Emergency. Your relationships with men are unhealthy. You've been in pain and felt unloved for so long that you've probably forgotten what it feels like to be yourself around men. You may not even know what a healthy relationship with a man is supposed to look like. It's time to take immediate action, and you can't do it alone. Reach out to other women for help. Find a loving and experienced counselor, join some support groups, use this tape as much as possible, and do whatever you can to begin to love yourself again. Fight off that numbness, negativity, and resentment. Stop playing the victim. Only you can make the change. You deserve much more than this. Here are some suggestions that will help you make the changes we've talked about in your relationships with men. Number one, view this tape over and over again until you gain a full understanding of all the secrets and principles. Number two, make a copy of the 10 biggest mistakes women make with men and read this list frequently, especially before dates if you're single. Number three, form a support group with other women based on everything you've learned in this video. You might start out by meeting once a month and just discussing some of the things you've learned and some of the habits you're trying to change. Working with other women will keep you inspired and motivated to put those principles into practice. Number four, make a relationship mistake list, a more personalized version of the 10 biggest mistakes. Here's how to do it. Sit down and think back over all of your relationships with men, both personal and professional. Write down everything you can see that you did wrong in relating to those men, based on your new understanding from this video. I hope you've had as good a time watching this video as I had making it. Breaking old habits and learning new ones isn't easy. I know from experience, but believe me, it's worth it. You can have wonderful, loving relationships with the men in your life. And I hope I've been a part of helping you to make your own special dreams of love to come true.